-hmm. And there was something about how Keisha Cole complained that you weren't giving her any songs because of your relationship with Beyonce and how she sort of said something about Beyonce. It wasn't it wasn't nothing towards Keisha. I mean, she knows that and everybody that with a brain knows that. In the realm of entertainment, the embrace of controversy often brings both fame and infamy. It's a dual-edged sword that can thrust artists into the spotlight, stoking debates and discussions that keep them firmly entrenched in the public eye. Conversely, it can also deliver crushing blows to careers, especially when the object of their criticism happens to be as universally revered as Beyonce. This is the story of Keisha Cole an exceptionally talented R&B artist who found herself at the epicenter of a maelstrom when she dared to voice her critical opinions of Beyonce. Yeah, and you I were, love Beyonce. And, and you was like, you know, first it was all this stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. To me, that just wasn't her, you know what I mean? Her thing, but I don't know, like, like you know, dude said, she switched it up or something. The 2013 feud between Keisha Cole and Beyonce was one of the most talked about and controversial celebrity clashes of that year. It garnered significant attention from fans, the media, and the entertainment industry. This feud had its roots in a series of events and statements made by both artists, and it unfolded against the backdrop of a competitive music industry and the power dynamics within it. Keisha Cole, a talented R&B singer and songwriter, was known known for her soulful voice and honest, relatable lyrics. She had risen to prominence with hits like Love and Heaven Sent and had built a loyal fan base over the years. The feud began when Keisha Cole took to Twitter to express her opinions on Beyonce's hit song, Bow Down, I Been On. The song was seen by some as a bold assertion of Beyonce's dominance in the music industry. Keisha Cole, however, saw it differently. She tweeted, Can't stand when people all self-righteous when it's convenient, it makes them look good. El Mao, but can still talk when convenient to FOH. In a since-deleted tweet, she went on to add, First women need to stick together, now bees better bow. Smm, but it's all G. Chicks stay shooting the but when I speak my mind, it's a prob. Keisha Cole's comments were unvarnished, forthright, and unapologetic, laying bare her candid assessment of Beyonce's work. She chose Twitter as her platform, a realm known for its swiftness and direct link to the public. In her tweets, she challenged Beyonce's lyrics and stage presence, contending that women should stand together rather than succumb to rivalry. Her critique did not mince words with phrases like, women need to stick together, and it makes them look good but can still talk when convenient, too. These comments, though undeniably a reflection of her genuine viewpoint, evoked a wide spectrum of reactions. Some lauded Keisha Cole for her unapologetic forthrightness, praising her for championing unity among women. Others, especially within the formidable ranks of Beyonce's fervent fan base, known as the Bayhive, vehemently disagreed and took personal offense. Beyonce, a celebrated icon in the music world and a symbol of female empowerment, had legions of protective and devoted followers. In the digital age, this controversy escalated with astonishing speed. Fans of both artists fervently engaged in heated debates across social media platforms. Keisha Cole's remarks quickly evolved into a trending topic, drawing intense attention to the unfolding drama. While her comments genuinely echoed her personal beliefs, they also kindled a wider public uproar. You see, Queen Bey, as she's affectionately known, is not merely a global sensation. She's a phenomenon. With a career spanning decades, she's earned the admiration and devotion of countless fans around the world. But perhaps no group is more passionate, fervent, and protective of Beyonce than her ardent fan base, affectionately dubbed the Bay Hive. But the Bay Hive is not just any fan club, it's a force to be reckoned with. To truly understand the impact and significance of the Bay Hive, one must delve into the depths of Beyonce's journey and the evolution of her fan base. Beyonce, Giselle Knowles Carter, burst onto the music scene as the lead singer of Destiny's Child in the late 1990s. Her talent and charisma were immediately evident, and she quickly ascended to the zenith of the music world. Destiny's Child, under her leadership, became one of the best-selling girl groups in history. However, it was when Beyoncé embarked on her solo career that she truly became a global icon. Albums like Dangerously in Love, Bidet, and I Am Sasha Fierce showcased her versatility as an artist, with hits like Crazy in Love, Irreplaceable, and Single Ladies put a ring on it, becoming anthems for a generation 
generation. But it was her self-titled album, Beyonce, released without any prior announcement in 2013, that signaled a paradigm shift in the music industry. It showcased her as an artist unafraid to challenge conventions and expectations. The album's themes of empowerment, feminism, and self-expression struck a chord with many, making it an instant classic. As Beyonce's artistry evolved, so did her fan base. The Bayhive began as a term of endearment for her fans, but it has since become a powerful collective of individuals who fiercely defend and support their queen. What sets the Bayhive apart is their unwavering dedication. They don't merely attend concerts and buy albums. They defend Beyonce on social media, analyze her every move, and mobilize to protect her from any perceived threats. The Bayhive's dedication is not limited to their online presence. They are known for their philanthropic efforts, including supporting various charitable causes championed by Beyonce herself. The Bayhive doesn't just stand their idol. They also embody the values she promotes, such as social justice, equality, and empowerment. One of the key factors that have contributed to the Bayhive's strength is Beyonce's own connection with her fans. She has an uncanny ability to make each member of the Bayhive feel seen and appreciated. Whether it's through her music, her personal messages, or her actions, Beyonce conveys a sense of gratitude and love for her supporters. Social media has played a significant role in the growth and influence of the Bayhive. Platforms like Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr have provided spaces for fans to connect, share their adoration for Beyonce, and mobilize for various causes. The Bayhive's online presence is both a testament to their dedication and a demonstration of their collective power. However, with great power comes great responsibility, and the Bayhive has faced criticism for their fervent defense of Beyonce. At times, their passion has escalated into online confrontations with those who dare to criticize or challenge their queen. This has led to accusations of cyberbullying and toxic behavior a reputation that the Bayhive as a whole vehemently rejects. In essence, the Bayhive represents the duality of fan culture in the digital age. They are a formidable force for good, using their collective power to support charitable causes and advocate for social justice. Simultaneously, they are a force to be reckoned with when it comes to defending their idol against any form of criticism. So basically, Keisha Cole's comments about Beyonce fell directly into the crosshairs of the Bayhive. With its unparalleled online presence and unwavering devotion, the Hive swiftly mobilized to defend their queen. Social media platforms became battlegrounds where fans clashed over differing opinions about Beyonce's artistry and the significance of Keisha Cole's comments. The Bayhive's response was not merely about defending an artist, it was about upholding the ideals and values that Beyonce represents. For them, Beyonce is not just a singer, she is a symbol of strength, resilience, and empowerment. Any attack on her, even in the form of constructive criticism, is seen as an affront to those principles. The clash between Keisha Cole and the Bayhive revealed the complex dynamics of fan culture in the digital age. It showcased the power of online communities to both support and protect their idols. It also highlighted the challenges of navigating conversations about artists in a hyper-connected world, where opinions can quickly escalate into heated debates and conflicts. In the end, the controversy surrounding Keisha Cole's comments became a pivotal moment in her career, a defining chapter that would cast a long shadow. It wasn't just an argument over opinions. It had profound implications for her relationships and standing within the music industry. Before diving into the decline, it's essential to appreciate Keisha Cole's rise to prominence. In the mid-2000s, she was a force to be reckoned with in the R&B music scene, boasting successful albums like The Way It Is and Just Like You. These albums were not only well-received critically, but also resonated with fans, propelling her to chart-topping positions and securing her status as a respected artist in her genre. The Way It Is, her debut album was a game changer for Keisha Cole. Released in 2005, it featured hit singles like I Should Have Cheated and Love, which showcased her powerful vocals and emotionally charged lyrics. The album quickly went platinum and set the stage for her follow-up projects. Just Like You, released in 2007, further solidified her position in the industry. The lead single, Let It Go, was a massive hit, and the album achieved both critical acclaim and commercial success. Keisha Cole had not only captured the hearts of R&B enthusiasts, but had also garnered the attention of the mainstream audience. Her voice and emotional depth set her apart, making her a formidable force in the industry. However, the trajectory of her career changed dramatically following her feud with Beyonce. After the confrontation with Beyonce, Keisha Cole's career began to unravel, and the first sign of trouble was the decline in her album sales. Her post-controversy releases faced a daunting challenge in recapturing the glory of her earlier works. Fans and critics alike began to notice a significant shift in her music, and this reflected in album 
album sales. Keisha Cole released several albums in the aftermath of the controversy, including A Different Me, Calling All Hearts, and Woman to Woman. While these albums still showcased her vocal prowess and songwriting skills, they couldn't replicate the success of her earlier works. Her once loyal fan base seemed to be dwindling, and these albums often struggled to gain the same level of attention and critical acclaim that her previous projects had enjoyed. A Different Me, her third studio album, marked the beginning of the decline. While it did debut at number two on the Billboard 200 chart, it failed to match the commercial success of her earlier releases. The album sold significantly fewer copies than Just Like You, and the singles received less airplay and attention. It became evident that her music was no longer capturing the zeitgeist as it once did. Calling All Hearts, her fourth album, continued this downward trend. It debuted at a disappointing number nine on the Billboard 200, marking a significant drop from her previous peak positions. The album's sales figures were a fraction of what her earlier works had achieved. Achieved. This decline was particularly concerning, as it suggested that Keisha Cole was no longer a dominating force in R&B music. By the time Woman to Woman was released, the writing was on the wall. The album failed to break into the top 10 of the Billboard 200 and received limited radio play. Keisha Cole was no longer the chart-topping artist she once was, and her album sales were a pale shadow of her earlier glory. In addition to the decline in album sales, Keisha Cole's chart performance also suffered in the wake of the controversy. Her ability to maintain a strong presence on the music charts was severely compromised. Her songs no longer resonated with the masses as they once had, and this reflected in her chart positions. During her heyday, Keisha Cole regularly graced the Billboard Hot 100 with her hits. Her earlier singles like Love and Let It Go had achieved top 10 positions on the chart Art, showcasing her influence and popularity. However, post-controversy, songs struggled to achieve the same level of chart success. While she did manage to chart some singles post-feud, they often landed in lower positions, far from the top-tier spots she had once claimed. It was no longer a given that a Keisha Cole track would become a chart-topping hit. Her chart presence became more sporadic, and it was evident that she was no longer a dominant figure on the chart. As if that's not enough, Keisha also lost a lot of connections with key players in the the music industry. In fact, producers like The Dream didn't want to work with her anymore. During an interview with The Breakfast Club, he was asked whether he would work with Cole after she suggested the song made Beyonce seem hypocritical. To this he answered, Right now because of what happened I can't, and I think she would respect why I can't. That's Beyonce my family. You're talking about my family and you can't do that. And there was something about how Keisha Cole complained that you weren't giving her any songs because of your relationship with Beyonce and how she sort of said something about Beyonce. It wasn't nothing towards Keisha. I mean, she knows that, and everybody that with a brain knows that. Additionally, the controversy also reverberated throughout her relationships within the music industry. Collaborations with fellow artists and producers became increasingly infrequent, as the negative publicity that had emerged due to her comments created a sense of hesitation and fear about potential backlash from the Bayhive. Keisha Cole found herself somewhat isolated, experiencing a stark shift in the dynamics of an industry where connections and alliances are crucial to success. Simultaneously, her public image, which had been carefully crafted over the years, years, began to undergo a transformation. Her outspoken and candid nature, which had endeared her to fans, took on a divisive dimension. While some admired her honesty, others viewed her as a polarizing figure, defined more by controversy than her musical talent. Keisha Cole was confronted with the challenge of rebuilding her public image and re-establishing herself as a respected artist. Amidst the professional turmoil, Keisha Cole faced personal hardship that further complicated her journey. Tragically, one of the most significant of these personal challenges was the loss of her mother, Frankie Lons, in 2020. Coping with the grief of losing a loved one while navigating the tumultuous terrain of her career was an emotional burden that few could comprehend. Furthermore, Keisha Cole's foray into reality television, once a notable part of her career, suffered a similar decline. For context, in the mid-2000s, the entertainment landscape was forever changed with the introduction of Keisha Cole the way it is. Making its debut in 2006, this groundbreaking reality show ushered in a new era of celebrity storytelling by offering an unprecedented, intimate glimpse into the life of the multifaceted artist, Keisha Cole. 
I'm who I am, and you either take it or you leave it, you know? This program wasn't your run-of-the-mill reality show. It was raw and unfiltered, providing a candid documentation of Keisha's intricate world, both on a personal and professional front. The primary focus of Keisha Cole, The Way It Is, was to peel back the layers of the artist's life and expose her vulnerabilities and triumphs. What set it apart was its portrayal of Keisha's tumultuous relationship with her estranged mother, Frankie, who was battling addiction, and her strained bond with her sister, Nephi. Keisha's journey was particularly poignant because she had experienced a challenging childhood, having grown up in foster care, away from her biological family. The show revealed her earnest desire to reconnect with her family and provide them with a better life, a quest that many viewers found deeply relatable and inspiring. Keisha's willingness to lay bare her tumultuous upbringing on television garnered her significant praise from her fans. This level of openness only deepened the connection between Keisha and her audience, fostering a sense of empathy and understanding. The reality show's brilliance lay in its dual function as a powerful marketing tool for Keisha's burgeoning music career. It allowed her to tap into the hearts and minds of her viewers, making her not just a chart-topping artist but a relatable figure who had overcome adversity. Despite its undoubted success, Keisha herself believed that the reality show, as beneficial as it was, had its drawbacks. She harbored concerns that her family was being exploited for the sake of television entertainment, and her mother Frankie's battle with substance addiction weighed heavily on her. Keisha longed for her mother to conquer her demons and embark on a path to recovery. The inner turmoil she faced regarding the impact of her reality show on her family's life was a testament to her genuine concern for their well-being. In 2008, after three successful seasons, Keisha Cole, The Way It Is, came to an abrupt end. Reports suggested that the show's conclusion was linked to financial disputes. Keisha and her family believed they weren't being compensated fairly. This marked the end of Keisha's involvement in the world of reality television, but her family wasn't quite ready to say goodbye to the small screen. BET extended an offer to Keisha's mother, Frankie, and sister Nefe for their own reality show, a move that Keisha deeply disapproved of. Keisha, on the other hand, was determined to maintain her focus on her music career. She released her fourth studio album, Calling All Hearts, but it didn't achieve the same level of success as her previous three albums. Her absence from the reality TV scene contributed to the decline in album sales. Nevertheless, Keisha was not willing to let her personal life be affected by her professional setbacks. During this time, she found love with NBA player Daniel Booby Gibson, and the two of them became parents to a son. In 2012, in a bid to reignite her music career and create a more stable family life, Keisha embarked on another reality show venture. This time, it was a family-centric show titled Keisha and Daniel, Family First. It seemed like a golden opportunity to leverage the reality show platform once again. We get stronger and stronger by the day. We got Keisha and Daniel family first. Keisha's return to the reality TV spotlight had a profound impact on aspiring artists, setting a trend that rising stars like Kay Michelle and Tamar Braxton would later follow. Both Kay Michelle and Tamar Braxton would use reality TV as a launch pad for their music careers. Yet, Keisha was the trailblazer, the original artist who had harnessed the power of reality TV to connect with fans and boost her musical journey. As the competition in the world of reality TV intensified with the emergence of fresh talent, Keisha's star began to lose some of its luster. Concurrently, her dissatisfaction with her record label began to grow. While social media had become a potent promotional tool for artists, Keisha's feud with Beyonce made it a contentious arena for her. Unfortunately, Keisha and Daniel, family first, didn't achieve the anticipated success, and the show eventually faltered. Adding a further layer of intricacy to her life, Keisha Cole's tumultuous marriage to Daniel Gibson found itself under intense media scrutiny during the highly publicized feud. This marital journey was far from smooth, characterized by a roller coaster of emotions, featuring both soaring highs and harrowing lows. These ups and downs were on full display for the world to witness, as their relationship became a topic of significant interest and discussion. Keisha and Daniel's union, marked by its share of separations and reconciliations, played out in the glaring spotlight of the public eye. The media's relentless attention to their marital trials and tribulations magnified the challenges they faced as a couple, putting their relationship under a magnifying glass. 
As their personal struggles became increasingly intertwined with Kishia's public image, the lines between her personal life and her professional career blurred. The ongoing attention to her marriage overshadowed Kishia's musical endeavors, diverting the spotlight away from her artistic achievements and creative output. It was a period of tumultuous change, one where the struggles within her marriage took center stage, eclipsing her musical talents and achievements. The public's perception of Kishia was influenced not only by her music, but also by the dynamics of her relationship, making it a complex and often intrusive chapter in her life. In a sense, her marriage to Daniel Gibson, while deeply personal, became a public spectacle, shaping the narrative around Keisha Cole. But within these struggles, Keisha Cole found strength in her vulnerability. Her ability to openly share her journey of healing, recovery, and resilience with her fans allowed her to connect on a deeper level. She became an inspiration to those grappling with their own personal challenges and setbacks demonstrating the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. In essence, her journey following the controversy serves as a poignant testament to the power of openness and authenticity in connecting with others on a profound level. Meanwhile, in recent years, Keisha's fans have spoken out on how they feel that the fact that she was blackballed after giving her opinion on Beyonce's song was totally unfair. One person commented on this saying, I know people like to stand up for their favorite artists, but the Beyonce fandom can be scary ASF. They flat out harass people for saying anything negative about Bay. No one can be critical, no one can dislike anything she does. People don't seem to understand how dangerous that kind of thinking is. Putting a fellow human on that exalted position isn't healthy. A second person added, You know something is wrong when you can't express how you truly feel about Beyonce, another human being. The same thing happened to several artists such as Carrie Hilson when she said something about Beyonce. This is crazy to me, it just doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.